Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying Oliver Edwards Mohican Mayfly. This is a great pattern for imitating the larger mayfly species, green drakes, yellow drakes, brown drakes, you know the Danicas, the Volgatas, any of the big species really. Floats well, offers a great a great footprint and silhouette and the fish certainly like it. Now, uh, as always I'm going to put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel get access to the members on the content the monthly tie-in sessions and be entered into the giveaways you can also subscribe, hit the bell button that's all, I appreciate it so I'm starting with the extended body and I've just got a needle in my vise, just a sewing needle and I've run on some light Cahill Uni in 8.0 you can use whatever thread you like really um, I find the Uni to be fine and I'm going to wee base on and it's maybe I don't know, ten of, just a 10 mil base or so you don't need loads and then I'm going to get my tail material and I'm using some mousse body here um, mousse is fairly tough it's just about the right thickness nice long fibres but you can use other stuff um, if you want I suppose and I've got say four or five fibres maybe half a dozen no more than that I know my fly I've only got three tails but the fish don't count and I mean they will eventually break it's not stacked very well Stick into my stack or something. Put it in again. Better. Now the length, obviously, it will depend on the size of the fly you're tying. I'm looking for on these. I'm looking for about an 18 mil long insect body, right, that's about the size of the 18, they can kind of vary up from about 15 to 22, 23 around here and I'm going to sort of roughly eyeball that and that's what I want the tail to be as well right, about 16, 17 mil and I'm just going to lash this down and then I'll come back And I've got a but a cream foam here. This is cross link foam. To be honest, I would prefer just to have ordinary fly foam. Um, but to get this colour, the only stuff I could get a hold of was cross link, which is a bit harder so, um, than the ordinary foam. But it just makes it. It doesn't want to compress just as easily when you're tying it. But otherwise, it's fine. Cream, white, yellow, tan. Up to you. Choose a colour that suits the mayfly where you live. And I've basically, it's like a, basically a 2mm square, right? it's 2mm cross link, and I've cut a 2mm strip. Now, I fold it in half, get the middle, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to cut a wee V notch, about a mil and a quarter, a mil and a half deep. So I've got that. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to stick the needle, the foam, into the needle and let the tails come in the notch. Right, that wee groove that lets the tails sort of sit in line with the body. And I'll just catch that. Three or four wraps gets me my first segment. Bring the thread forward couple of mil only see just check that all the way around, I want it even I 
a decent coverage around my needle. So once I'm happy. And then it's the subsequent segments are actually a wee bit simpler because you know that the, you now know the foam's sitting along the body, just nice along that pin. So you, the inside's surrounded, basically. You just need three or four wraps per segment. And as I say, try to keep it fairly even. We'll just come in, I've got one ready made, I just want to check the length. Spot on. So, we'll come in. I want to tie over the moose a wee bit more. And I'll just whip finish by hand. Right, so obviously, if you're doing these, sit and tie all the bodies, right? Do half a dozen bodies or however many you're tying. And then come in later and tie the rest of the fly. Right. I've left both my tag ends of thread nice and long, and I've left the, the butt ends of the moose, and I just push it off. Pull the thread a wee bit just to tighten everything and then what I like to do is I'll roll it. Oliver uses a table, he rolls it on the table, but I just find my fingers fit okay. And that'll kinda round everything out. Especially on the underside. Smooth things out nicely. Now the hook I'm using is a Kamazan B170 and I'm tying this on a size 12. I would actually prefer a B160 size 10 but I've run out of them because um, the, the B160's got a slightly wider gate but this hook is fine right? it, you want like a, a reasonable gate B160, B160 size 8 and 10 or B170 10 and 12 or whatever your preferred hook is now I'm just going to take the same thread I'm going to Run it along the shank. I'll come to the halfway point. And it's I've been up and down. I'm going to get some yellow. Again, yellow or olive. If you've got a kind of dark row there here and you dye it fluorescent yellow, you've got a really nice colour for a lot of the mayfly species as well. I'm just using yellow. I've got a wee pinch, I'm just going to clean it, get that under for it, so I can stack this. Right, I'm going to tie it in, basically slightly longer than the hook. Um, you can tie it, I mean you can go a wee bit longer maybe, but if you go too long the fly will land on its side a lot and all that and fall over. A lot of times fish will still eat it so you don't need to worry too much, but I like something like that, just, just slightly longer than the hook, if that's the hook eye. So I'll come in and I'm going to pinch it in. and run the thread through the butts. Get everything. And trim it close. Post this wing a wee bit. Um, I mean, this just helps when you're tying in the 
the body you can you can probably skip this stage to be honest um, but I just like to keep that hair as far as possible sort of up and out of my way now to help this a bit more durable I'm going to just come in with some head cement all along that underbody and then the roots of the hair, right? That's something that Ollie does. Uh, right, so get my body, take my thread right to the back, and then what I like to do is fold the foam back and out of the way. Offer it in with the foam right at the back, at, right at the bend, and then I'll come in here two or three wraps to get that caught in. And you can trim away your waist. Don't worry if you catch the odd bit of your deer hair when it's no the end of the world. And just fold everything back. tighten up and that means you're catching in the tag end of the thread both tag ends of the thread which is the core of the body and uh, the moose hair so it's never going to fall out and then I basically want two segments to take me to the wing so It's a wee bit fiddly, but don't worry too much about it. You know, you don't need to get it absolutely perfect. And that there, that's about halfway. So, I'm going to bring my foam forward, and then everything gets easy. Catch it in. Make sure the foam's wrapping around the hook. take a few more wraps than you would on the extended body here because you're just um, basically you're securing the foam onto the hook as well just putting the segment in pull it back and I right, come right into the back of the wing Make sure it's sitting how you like it. Tie that in. Again, put a few wraps in, then lift everything, bring the thread in front. Hackle, I'm using an, a grizzly dyed olive and like a kind of light blue done. Grizzly dyed yellow is good. A grizzly and a yellow. Up to yourself. Just tie that in on my side. Trim over it away, and then you've got two options. You can tie the hackle, tie it off, then dub, or I like to dub and then tie the hackle, um, which is normally not something I would do, but uh, in this fly, I think it kind of it works better. So I've just got some dark brown dubbing, doesn't matter what you use. This is SLF and Squirrel, 
um, but anything again you can adjust the colour to suit the flies where you are lighter or darker Just a wee ball and make sure you leave yourself a good space here I've got an eye, two eye lengths clear right if I just tidy that up with the thread a bit you'll see a good two eye lengths there and I'll take the hackles it's easier to wind them one at a time and about come in I like two into my third turn usually um, depend on the the quality of the hackle obviously but you don't need a lot you've got you know you're doubling it up so oops I said you're really stick thinking you've got like six tons of hackle because you're obviously using the two feathers something like that and just catch them off and you can see here I'm pinching and sweeping everything up right so it's out of my way I can snap them away actually and then I'll just come in and I'm going to tidy all this up take, cut any any trapped fibres just cut them away and then you're ready to bring the sort of thorax over just sweep make sure the deer hair is coming up and in between right, you'll see as it gets squeezed it will sort of fan out along parallel to the body much the same way as an actual mayfly's wing and then sort of draw the hackle back try not to bias one side too much I mean you might but and then when you get in a nice tight wrap and tighten up just get a check something's not right there It's maybe an uneven pull on the foam. There we go. That'll sit. Much better. I mean, the fish wouldn't have cared at all, but... You can see now it's starting to really take shape. Um, again, you will have... Probably snared a couple of hackle fibres. It's almost impossible not to... I just come in and tidy them up just now before I start putting in all the consolidating wraps. And you can see, um, now I, normally I would I would never dub the entire my hackle, but it's covered by the foam. It's everything's well tied in and secured, so it's nice and safe, right? If you snap your thread, do not panic. Just start it again, right? Tie that there, I'll come to the front to anchor it on the hook and then come back. And I'm just going to use my thread, just wind forward towards the eye, creating a flat spot. And then I'll fold back and I do this one at a time to create the head of the fly. I find if I do it one at a time, I'm I get it more even. Two or three turns, locking everything in, and then stretch the foam tag, press your scissors down, and trim it. And you want the cut being sort of parallel to the hook shank rather than across the way. If you have your scissors going that way, you'll get a better cut. Then I'll just Take the thread, just crush that, and then whip finish. Take away the thread. If you want to, you can have a wee tidy up. 
mean, from a fishing point of view, this doesn't matter, but I, I feel like if you've gone to the trouble of tying a nice fly, you know, you might as well, you might as well um, take that extra second. Last thing to do, come in, I'll sort of darken the last couple of sections, top and bottom. And then I like to just put some dots. I don't know that the fish really care that much, but... I'll come to the small end. I'll do the... Oh, my small end seems to have dried out. I'll do the... The back of the thorax. And then, come on, get a wee eye, so we can see where it's going. I mean, obviously the eyes don't really matter, but why not, you've got the pen in your hand. You can sort of tug at the hackle, get it to sit, but that's, that's it, that's your Mohican Mayfly. It's a very good pattern. As I say, it sits great on the water. I think it's a better river fly than a still water fly. I find, I find it, does, it doesn't hook up as well for some reason when you're fishing it on still water. I mean, obviously it's just something to do with the way the fish are taking the fly. But um, on the rivers, it's a fantastic dry fly. So there you go. That's the Mohican Mayfly. I hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines guys, bye.